Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome back for Science Olympiad. Uh, this is going to be for the Reflection Relay. Obviously, you guys are on the right spot. If you're not, I expect to see your name start dropping off. Um, I'm excited that we are back for a second year. Um, hopefully, last year was a little bit of a learning time for everybody, and we can start to, to see kids really start to get it. I'm not saying that they didn't get it last year. So to deliver, first off, my name is Michael Wood. Um, I'm the event supervisor. Uh, this is my second year returning doing that. So I'm excited to be back for a second year. Um, I don't expect Mr. Ogden uh, to replace me anytime soon, I hope. So um, to kind of spread a uh, constant message, I have an iMovie that I'm gonna share with you guys. So give me a couple seconds, I'm gonna share my screen. And then uh, there will be audio with it. So if for some reason um, it doesn't, audio doesn't come across, uh, Stephen, feel free to unmute and let me know. Um, if you have questions, uh, either write them down or put them in the chat, and then we'll get to that afterwards. All right. Let's talk about the law of reflection. A mirror has a normal line. This will be considered like zero degrees. You have an incident angle, which is a light coming into the mirror, and you have the reflected angle, which is a light leaving the mirror. These two angles are measured off of the normal line, and they must equal each other. Let's talk about the anatomy of a mirror. I'm gonna zoom in pretty close here. With a mirror, there was a reflective side. In the old days, it was silver. The top side is covered with glass, a protective coating. When you're dealing with the incident angle and the reflective angle, trying to figure out the actual angles off of the normal line, you have to take into account the thickness, minute as it may be, of the glass. This is the reflective part on this side, and then the glass portion, which is up on top. So the light actually reflects from the very tip here, goes all the way through that glass. Let's talk about the tabletop portion. For the tabletop portion, the students will be provided four of these mirrors that are mounted on blocks that they can place anywhere on the table, not just on the white piece of paper. The white piece of paper measures one and a half feet by three feet. This work area is where the students can write, can draw lines to take that laser path with the laser being off, place the mirrors and figure out the angles to get to the target somewhere taped off of the working white paper. The students can bring any materials they want in to help them, but they cannot bring a light source. These mirrors, which are mounted to the wooden block have a little center mark on them so the students know exactly where the center of that mirror is. These protractors I printed up on a transparency will not be provided, but you, your team can provide them if that would help them. The only marking that's gonna be on the paper is a six inch line that shows the path that the laser is gonna take. It's six inches from the base of the laser. All these other markings are just for demonstration purposes that I have on the paper right now. The students are going to have five minutes to set up the table how they want to reflect that laser. Using that white piece of paper, they can draw lines to figure out their angles to reflect that laser off of the mirrors. The more mirrors they hit, the better it is for the score. 
the mirrors don't have to be on the playing field. They can be off the playing field too. After the five minutes, the students will step away from the table and a judge is gonna come by and use this white piece of paper to figure out how many mirrors the laser is reflecting off of. Let me turn the lights off and I'll show you how that works. So here we can see one, two, three mirrors coming over to the fourth. Yep, it's the fourth mirror and then goes to the target. So I'm gonna turn the lights back on and let's talk about the target for a second. The target's gonna be taped down. Let's talk about the scoring on the target. I guess it can best be described as a multiplier. If we look closely here, so right now the lasers in the bullseye portion, so the highest multiplier. Now it's in the lower multiplier. So this entire center portion is the higher multiplier. If it's on the line, we're going to give it the higher score. Even if it's barely on the target, it's still on the target. So you'll get the lower multiplier. You don't get any extra bonuses for being right in the very center. Sometimes there will be an obstacle on the course. The more mirrors you hit, the better it is for your score. If you hit one mirror and then hit the target, you'll get one point. Depending upon where you hit on the target, that's your multiplier. So if you were to hit two mirrors, then you will get th only three points for the mult and then have the multiplier. So if it's on the outside of that target, your multiplier is four. If it's on the inside of that target, your multiplier is six. If you hit three mirrors, you get six points times your multiplier. If you get four mirrors, you got 10 points times your multiplier. You can achieve points without hitting the target. You just won't get that multiplier. All right, let's move on to the 3D portion. When the students enter the room, they'll see a protractor on the floor. It's an 80 centimeter radius protractor. They're not allowed to touch it, stand on it. That's gonna be just below where the stationary mirror is located. The students will be given three handheld mirrors. The fourth mirror will be located just above the protractor. That mirror height will be either at the flashlight level, six inches below or six inches above. Only one mirror will be visible. The light source will be a flashlight, a mag light style flashlight with a focusable beam. This is a 3D cell mag light. Somewhere in the room will be a red target and a green target. I'm going to ask the teams who the team leader is. That person will be the spokesperson. The team will be given one minute to set up their positioning with the flashlight being off. If the team is able to set up before that one minute has expired, the team leader needs to announce, we are all set or something to that effect. We're gonna stop the stopwatch and record that time. That time will be used for a tiebreaker. Once the students are all set, then we're going to turn off the lights in the classroom. It gets very, very dark. Make sure your students are prepared for that. At this point, we're going to read some instructions and the judge is going to turn the flashlight on 
and start the stopwatches at the same time. The team will have a total of one minute to reflect the light off of all four mirrors. And hopefully be on target. They have to stay on the target for a total of three seconds. If they come off the target, then the time will, the three seconds will start all over. Once they're on the target for three seconds, We'll go 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. We'll stop the time and record it. This process will be repeated for the green target. That time will also be recorded and the two times will be averaged together for your score. For the tabletop portion, every team will start out with 60 points. Depending upon the number of mirrors and your target value, the multiplier, it's going to be figured out either 0 to 60 points will be subtracted from 60. For the 3D part, your two scores will be averaged together and that will be added onto your 2D score. So the score ranges total would be 3 to 120. The lower the score, the better. Um, so there you go. All right, Stephen, can you hear me? Okay, excellent. Um, so that's reflection relay in a nutshell. Um, the scoring target on the tabletop portion that I have shown in the video is a little different than um, what it might be, what it might be actually. I have a bunch of the scoring targets. I'm not sure if this is the image is probably reversed, but here's the here's the bullseye portion. That's where you get the higher multiplier is in the center. Um, the verbiage here might be different on what is on the video versus what it is in real life, but the quarter sections are all, they're still quartered. So the middle portion is the higher multiplier, which is the six times six. And then just the outer edge on both the left and the right, that's where that's the four multiplier. Um, <clears throat> when I said the, for the 3D portion, the scores are averaged together. That's, you're gonna have a green target, you're gonna have a red target. And then those times will be averaged together uh, to then apply to what your 2D score was. So this event is a three person, three student event. Um, there's no way around that. You have to have uh, three students. Something that is introduced in the 2023 season for scoring is designating a team leader. Uh, that team leader will announce for the 3D portion when their prep time is all finished, when they are done setting the mirrors or standing where they wanna be, and then we can stop that. That prep time is very important if there is a tiebreaker. Uh, that student leader is also going to be utilized for uh, the 2D, for the tabletop portion. Once the judges determine what your score is, your team leader will sign off or accept that score. That's uh, new for this uh, 2023 season. Um, the flashlight, let me talk a little bit about that. So for the 3D part, which is for the handheld mirrors, uh, the flashlight that we are using for the 2023 season and beyond is a three cell mag light. It's a, it's a um, LED. So I believe in the frequently asked questions, 
that was already asked and we do have the exact model number for the flashlight that we are using. Um, I'm going to share my screen one more time so I can show you guys and I don't know if I'm going to have audio. Um, hopefully I do, um, but I'm going to show you the scorecard, uh, the score sheet that we will actually be using. Um, and that's just so that you guys know what it's going to look like. So you're going to have your school name, uh, your team number, the mirrors hit, and then if you can see where it says the team captain's initials, that's what's new for the 2023 year, 2023 season. Then you have your, that's for your tabletop, your 2D part, and then down here is the, uh, for your three-dimensional part. There might be some minor modifications to this score sheet, but in jest, it's it's still the same thing. All right, and at that, I'm going to open up for questions. Uh, we have a few questions in the chat already. Uh, one from Francie. Will the video be on the website under this event? Referring to the video that you presented. Uh, I, I don't know if that specific video will be on there, but this, this video that's being recorded today will be on there. And I noticed from last year, this video is on there also. Next from Rachel, is your score in Sorry, is your score in tabletop score also based on how quickly you achieve it or just based on t the target zone and number of mirrors? So good question. Um, timing, the you have five minutes. So if the teams get their tabletop set up in a minute and a half, uh, then they have three and a half minutes to stand away from their table and not be fidgeting and not second guess. Um, so time is only a deadline. Uh, they do not get any bonuses for being done early. And uh, for the tabletop portion, there's gonna be other teams in the room. So uh, we're gonna provide, hopefully provide space between the tables. Um, so we're gonna give everybody in that room five minutes to set their table up. And then um, at that five minute mark, Everybody hands up, step away from the tables, and then the judges will come in and score everything. We have another question from uh, Elise. What is the target size for the 3D portion? That is a very good question. Um, so in your, if you received a kit from Science Olympiad, uh, with all the mirrors and lasers, you'll have the actual target itself. Um, hey, Madeline, can you bring me a ruler? I'll have my secretary grab me a ruler and we'll measure it here in a second. So the target measures four inches wide and it's on a regular mirror block, which is a little old, little under three and a quarter inches tall. Uh, one comment, uh, I, I believe uh, she was asking for the, uh, the 3D portion, not the 2D portion, sorry. Oh, very good, thank you, good catch. Uh, so the target for the, uh, for the 3D portion can range from five inches to 12 inches. And it's a circuit, it's a cir it's a circle in diameter or circular. Another question from Christy. Do the same three students who complete in the table who compete in the tabletop have to be the same that compete in the 3D? Uh, good question. That's the first time everyone has ever asked that question. Yes, they do have to be the, the same three people. 
question from Liz. Do we get kits through our school or do we have to order them ourselves? Uh, you can order those through Science Olympiad. Um, talk with your head coach and uh, they should be able to hook you up and get you the starter kits. Um, they're starter kits, I believe, for all the events. So you may just need to specify with your head coach that you need a reflection relay kit. That's all the questions we have at the moment. OK, I think somebody had their hand raised. Oh, I apologize. I missed the hand raise. Uh, you can come off mute if you would like. Uh, I did know comment from uh, Francie. Uh, I've looked at the description and can't find the model number for the flashlight for the 3D portion. Um, I will look at the website uh, for you there. And if it's not, uh, give me a couple days and I'll have it up there. Um, it's a focusable beam 3D cell, D as in David, uh, maglite that has a focusable beam to it. But I know I have all the model numbers uh, for them. So if it's not up there now, uh, it'll be up there in a couple of days. Uh, it is currently there under, the, uh, it's the first question under FAQs uh, near the bottom of the page. Whew, good. All right, so let me talk a little bit about coaching your students. Um, with, so when you work with your students, some students understand the spatial relations of where their body is and how their body is pointing and positioned and all that. Other students just, they just don't get it. It just doesn't click with them. Work with them. Um, when I was a coach for this event, I had both sets of students. Um, it is possible for the ones that don't understand it, that don't get it, they will. They'll, they'll end up getting it. So um, having the time portion when you're running the practice sessions at your house, at your school, where, wherever you have your practice sessions, um, I wouldn't really keep total track of the time yet as they're learning, um, let them understand the concept that light travels in a straight direction. It can't be bent. Uh, you just have to reflect that light to maneuver around obstacles. And it's really neat when your students get it, when, when you see that click and they, they start lining up where they need to. It's, it's cool. It's very rewarding as a coach to see that. Any other questions? So there are some practice events. Uh, those are on the uh, Science Olympiad elementary page. You will, you can only attend one of those sessions uh, that are in your district. So your head coach will know which event you are allowed to attend. I would highly suggest um, doing that. I don't. I don't think we'll allow coaches and spectators in for that event. Um, for the main event on what May 13th, uh, our goal is to allow spectators. It is really neat to have your team together and to come watch your reflection relay team. Um, it's always been a very uh, positive thing for when I was a coach to have our entire team come and watch the reflection relay team perform. Um, we do ask, require, demand uh, that all spectators have to remain absolutely silent. Uh, for the tabletop portion, you're not going to be the only team in there. So we want all the teams to have, si to have silence so they can concentrate 
and communicate with each other as a team. Um, for the 3D part, it'll only be your team. So um, again, we want absolute silence so that there is no continuation of coaching. Uh, very important. And that's all I have to say about that. So I look forward to seeing your students um, and uh, look forward to meeting you guys as well. Okay, what was that one question? It dropped off before I could read it. Uh is the target for tabletop fixed to the table or could it accidentally be bumped or moved during the students working on it? Uh, so it can accidentally be bumped. It's going to be taped down pretty good though. Um, same with the target, same with the laser. Everything's going to be taped down pretty well. Um, can it be bumped? Yes. And if that happens, uh, then the target can be placed back up or even the judge will probably be within an arm's reach and can help put that target back up. Um, however, if that target gets knocked down by the students, right after that five minute mark expires, then unfortunately we can't adjust the table anymore and that target will remain down. All right, uh, Stephen, then I'm going to put my little closing remarks out there. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us for the coaching extravaganza for Science Olympiad for the Reflection Relay. Have a great day.